Hi, I'm Willie with H5 Technology and welcome to my channel. Thank you for being here. I want to thank you for coming back. I appreciate each and every one of you. So this is our Unify Best Practices Part 2. I've really been thinking about how I want to do this. And so in this one video, we're going to talk about quality of service, QoS. We're going to talk about it from the switch side and we're going to talk about it from the USG side. And we're mostly going to talk about it from making sure that everything is fair and then also looking at QoS. So let's let's get over to it real quick. You remember our our controller that we're using for this in the last video we moved the USG around and what we did was we changed the subnet from a default 192.168.1 uh, subnet over to the 192.168.4 subnet. The controller is up and running and we're going to do two things. The first thing that I want to show you is we are going to turn on as far as quality of service goes we're going to turn on the smart cues on the USG so we're going to click on our USG we're going to go over to config we're going to expand the WAN section so when you come in if you're on 5.7.23 you're going to come into config you're going to go over to WAN you're going to click enable smart cues you're going to hit well you if you know the speed of your internet feel free to to fill this in but this will do something really cool if you hit pre-populate it'll actually run a speed test now I did this earlier so it, it for some reason it didn't show the speed test and remembered those values but it shows that I have basically 100 megabits down and 15 megabits up so this would be your WAN speed I'm going to hit uh, Q changes, then I'm going to hit apply changes. It's going to go ahead and it's going to apply the smart cues to the USG. Now the smart cues live on the WAN interface and I'm going to show that to you here in just a second. We're going to let everything get provisioned and it looks like it's provisioning now. So we're going to open up, get ready to open up PuTTY. Okay, looks like it is provisioned. So what we're going to do is we're going to go in here And I don't think that it probably kept any of the stuff. I've been copying and pasting a lot of things here. So we'll get our password there. Go back here. And we'll paste in the password. Now, what I'm going to do, since this is provision, is I'm going to do a show configuration. And it's going to build the config. It's going to give us the output. We're going to scroll all the way down. We get down towards the bottom we're going to have this section where it talks about the smart cues all right so here it is traffic control smart queue WAN download enabled rate and it does it in uh, KB's upload and then what our WAN interface is now the way that smart queue works is it's what's called fair queuing so what does that mean? I'm going to pop this picture up here. And, um, and this will kind of show us what smart queue is, if you can kind of visualize it. So anytime I talk about the Internet or things like that, I talk about like your bandwidth being different size hoses, right, that comes in. So if this is my 100 megabit pipe, this may be a 50 megabit pipe, this may be a gigabit pipe. So we've got our Internet coming in. And what FairQ is going to do, uh, basically, is that if I've got six devices that are trying to get to the internet, it's going to take that bandwidth and it's going to divide it equally amongst the six devices. So everything is fair. It's a fair queue. And you can see if I had four machines, it would split this. And if we were all trying to get out, it would split those resources evenly. Now, this may not be the most accurate representation, but it is a very good idea of how fair queue works. It takes that resource and splits it evenly amongst all of the the machines or resources or whatever that are trying to get out of that WAN interface. So that that's it. And so with the smart queue, you have to be careful because I do believe that DPI still doesn't work. Let's see. Let's bring up our release notes. And let's see. I, if anybody knows, I still don't think that you can use DPI and smart queues at the same time. You might be able to now, but I think there's also some off offloading things uh, 
that if, if you're trying to do offload but you've got smart cues on there might be something going on there if you know about that please uh, leave a comment so that we can all get a little bit smarter on that now the second thing that I want to talk to you about quality of service on is your switch one best practice that I always do no matter how small the network is is if I have the capability to set up VLANs and I'm gonna put a voice network or put voice on the network I always use a separate network a separate VLAN and I run some sort of quality of service is available if it is available now some people will say well if you've only got two phones okay but if you've got two phones and you've got a USG and you've got a unify switch in the extra 30 seconds that it took you to create a voice over IP network so you can start doing uh, access control lists you can start doing a firewalling and quality of service that extra 30 seconds that it took you why didn't you do it because somebody said you didn't have to or whatever this is best practices so this is I'm explaining how I do this why I do this you have that VLAN in there the groundwork's already laid we can look at firewall rules later we can look at quality of service and things like that so we're gonna put um, we're gonna put a voice network on this controller so we're gonna go into settings we're gonna go to networks we're gonna create a network we're gonna call it we'll call it VoIP it's gonna be a corporate network because we want free free flow between those VLANs for now we're gonna call it VLAN 2 we'll make it 192.168 and we'll let the USG handle things here and I think we'll go ahead and leave all of that We'll leave all of that default for now. So what's going to happen, of course, we're going to provision again. And that's actually going to provision the switch. And then it's also going to provision the USG. It's going to create this layer 3 interface as virtual interface on the USG. It's also going to create the regular VLAN on the switch. So now what we're going to do is we're going to come into Profiles. We're going to come over to switch ports and we're going to create a new port profile. And we're going to call this, we'll just call this DOS Lab. And we're not going to mess with the PoE on this. Our native network is just going to be our LAN. We're going to tag our voice over IP, which is VLAN 2. So when we get to setting a phone up on this network, you'll see where we tell the phone that it's on VLAN 2, but that the PC pass-through port is actually either untagged or on VLAN 1. Now here, this is curious, it asks us what the voice network is. So we're going to select voice over IP 2. Now we're going to let all of this provision, and then we're going to remote into the switch and we're going to take a look and see exactly what it did in the switch. Let's see if we are provisioned. We could be provisioned already. So that's 4.6. So we're going to pop up another putty session here. 4.6 admin paste in our password and must have forgot the password or maybe I clicked some something else. So now we'll go back here. Okay, now we're in the switch. But normally, if you do a help, eh, well, you see it's got that Unify layer on top of it. So it's really, it runs EdgeOS, and then the Unify stuff is on top of it. So we're going to do a Telnet to localhost. Now, it's going to open this up, and it's going to tell you, warning, the changes may break controller settings and only be effective until reboot. So we can come in here and poke around at what Unify is doing under the hood, but if we make any changes, we can either really screw up our network, uh, or those changes, once we provision or it reboots, will just get blown out. And that's okay. So we've got to go into enable mode. And now what we're going to do is we're going to do a show configuration. And it is not show configuration here like it is in the USG. So the, the command set's a little different. You actually have to do it like you do an edge switch here and do a show um, running config. So show running config. Now, we're going to go through here. The very first thing we see uh, on this screen is right here. It says class of service DOT 
one p mapping zero zero and then right underneath it it says c o s q min bandwidth and then there's these numbers here right so what d o t p one or eight o two dot uh eight o two dot one something eight o two dot one p what it does or i triple e eight o two dot one p what it does is it basically now I'm gonna really oversimplify this there's a lot of reading you can do to figure this out I'm gonna kinda of oversimplify it, but what it does is it maps a class of service um, and I'm using a, I think now correct me if I'm wrong on this but it it does it based on MAC address but it takes that and it puts it into a queue and there are eight queues zero being the um, the lowest priority, seven being the highest priority. So what you're seeing right here are those eight queues. So it'd be zero through eight, and then each one of these is a percentage of the bandwidth, minimum bandwidth guaranteed to those those queues. So we can actually uh, come in here and we can do. Sh let's do. Uh, we'll do this. We'll do uh, configure. And we'll do class of service. And if we do a question mark, you you got a couple other things. You can actually do a DSCP markings. You can do trust. So, but if we look at how they're configuring this auto QoS, it says enter the priority. So we're going to put zero. And this is enter the class, enter the traffic class to map to the 802.1p priority. So um, if we do zero that's Q0, right? Or the traffic class. So they've got it set to zero, 00. What else did they have? They have the COSQ, and then this is the minimum bandwidth. So now, if you go in line, it says enter the minimum bandwidth percentage for Q0. So it's gonna be 0%. Then the next one, see if we keep hitting question mark and going down the line, it's it's doing each of these queues until we get all the way to that Q7 and then you have to push enter to execute the command now the other thing that we can do we created that profile so what we can do is we can come back in here to the devices we'll come over to our switch we'll go down to port 2 we'll edit port 2 we're going to come over here to switch port profile and we're going to put this in the DOS lab uh, profile. We're going to apply that. It's going to provision out to the switch real quick. We're going to bring back our putty session. We'll, we'll exit this real quick because I'm not sure I've not done this on the fly like this. So we'll redo a telnet and an enable. And then we'll do a show, it's not configuration, it's running config. Okay, so let's go down to port two. So you can see the configuration of port one right here. And now if we go down to port two, you can see it shows voice VLAN is VLAN two. VLAN participation include to we had that above tagging to but it actually sets that voice VLAN on the port so they've got they've got some things happening under the hood uh, I wouldn't say that this is I mean this is comparable to Cisco quality of service I I would think the uh, Cisco auto QoS except when you look at Cisco auto QoS I mean the configuration is pages and pages and pages and pages but if you are going to run voice on your network and you have Unify Gear, take the extra 30 seconds. You saw how quickly we created that voice network, how quickly we created the switch port profiles. Just do it. It'll be out of the way. You'll thank yourself later once your network grows. If it doesn't grow, whatever, you still will have a, a network that is configured to best practices. So that's it for this best practices video. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe. Please copy and share. Please follow me on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, if you need consulting, 
For best practices for networking, security, voice over IP, please visit h5llc.com down there. Uh, we also have an Amazon shop. If you want to buy any of the gear you see featured in the videos, that link is down there. And as always, thank you very much, and we'll see you in the next video.